What images come to your mind when you hear the word victory? Do you think about military victories? What about political victories? Then of course, there are athletic victories. It has been said, everyone loves a winner. Our culture is completely wrapped up in winning and it starts so young. I can remember as an elementary principal, I would go out to the playground at recess and I was amazed at all of the different rules that were created by kids because they simply didn't want to lose or get out of the game. It didn't matter if it was wall ball or four square or tag, students would constantly make up different rules so they wouldn't lose. In sports, coaches scheme and create game plans so that their teams will win. They spend hours planning and preparing their team to go into a competition with a strategy, a game plan to win. No one likes losing. Winning and losing can become very personal. When we win, you feel really good about yourself. But losing brings on feelings that are just the opposite. But did you catch who it was about? It's about you. It's about how you feel about yourself. Spiritually though, it's not about you. What we deserve is to lose. We've done nothing that allows us to have victory. That is why Jesus is so important. Jesus did experience victory. Jesus conquered death. When God raised Jesus from the dead, God was providing us with a game plan for victory. It's only because of what Jesus did that gives us victory. But the game doesn't end when we recognize our need for a savior from sin. 1 John 5, 4 through 5 says, For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Paul used several athletic analogies in his letter. To the church in Corinth, he wrote, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training and they do it to win the prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. Are you running a race that leads to a prize that fades away or to an eternal prize? To the church in Philippi, he wrote, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. Are your goals kingdom focused or worldly focused? And to the Galatians, he wrote, you were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? I encourage you today to examine what might be holding you back from following the truth. What might be keeping you from walking by faith? What kind of race are you training for? When I coached high school sports, it would be frustrating when my team didn't execute the game plan I created that would lead us to victory. Well, God has a game plan for your life that will lead you to victory. Are you willing to follow his plan instead of your plan?